Well, I was born in North Wales in 1960. Um, I had a good time living in the countryside and uh, we had rivers, streams um, and I enjoyed all that stuff. Uh, quite artistic early on, um, did art in school, then moved to Stoke-on-Trent for a foundation course in art and then did the degree course in the same place. Met Paul Harvey and other influential pals who have international editions out of a book called The New World, which was published in 2018 by the New York Review of Comics and very influential in the success of that book was its designer who was called Seth and is a cartoonist from Canada and he has a lot of fans and he was able to as it were introduce me to people through his well-knownness and because New York Review Comics is a very prestigious publisher people in other countries in publishing companies were very interested in what they were bringing out and so they grabbed hold of the right the rights for international editions and the most recent edition to be coming out is from Postwave in Chinese well pool's interesting because you can see why the port is there on that narrow stretch of water I've excavated that and so that is why it's there and that kind of really is the root of everything down in pool the harbour is still working it's still a very interesting place because uh, there are still boats coming there from Holland. I think there's still boats coming from Newfoundland. Walking around the streets, I thought, when you read Frederick Brown, Raymond Chandler, there's a strong sense of place in, in those detective stories as a kind of nugget, a way of, a way of starting something. I thought if I could have the sense of detection in an urban scene, it would add a luck, it would add a flavour. I've always been particularly impressed by Edward Hopper, painter, and Giorgio de Chirico, painter. Um, but for me, painting, I've done paintings myself, but painting doesn't quite cut it in terms of what I want to achieve. Um, I like to have a narrative. I like to even if it's a minimal narrative and there's very little going on, I think it's important to be able to step on from just the one scene. I think I've perhaps stumbled on the same kind of thing that William Blake might have achieved in terms of arriving at abstract ideas described in terms of words and pictures. The term genius, I think in general, is greatly overused. However, in relation to Chris Reynolds, I have no hesitation in using it. His sheer persistence of vision, creative imagination, and continuing and endless development of his artistic universe is truly phenomenal. Nowadays, I hear a lot about the development of the metaverse and immersive creative experiences. The ultimate immersive environment is the human creative imagination. It was you that started me. Shut up, Jen. No, I won't. I don't want to be in this village, but starting smoking as well, it's, it's too much. I don't think I'm going to go onto the silver screen. I mean, there's a TV series in preparation, but that's nothing really to do with me, and it's an adaptation of my New World book. But for my own work in itself, I think that I'm going to stick with comics for the very reason that I can have whole control of it. And, for example, this morning, before I came here, I did a new story, six panels, completed it, put it on Twitter, um, printable quality, and I did that using the photographs I took in your car yesterday in the car park in Poole. And that's a nice little story, and I'm happy with it, and it took 40 minutes this morning to do it, which is very, very convenient, because it, you know, if I'd drawn that, it would have taken ages, and I probably wouldn't have bothered. But having the photos handy, just an idea, 
it can just I've got everything in templates I can just very very simply in very little time I do think about synchronicity and things being at the right time and things being in front of me that I ought to be paying attention to that I can perhaps use rather than dig in amongst old stuff Don't expect me to help you. Why am I mixed up with him? I must be really desperate. And so the idea was, what can I do? What can the theme be? I thought a sense of place, a small town, lady trying to leave, but she's not able to. And that can be the kind of nugget that the stories about this place revolve around. But there were still stories about places mainly rather than the people in them, although the people were stronger. But it was interesting in a way because of the constraints of that, because previously in Boritania comics, I could have a story that went on for as long as I liked, but here I'll, I was restricting each little story to six panels. Most recently, I've been using an iPhone camera to produce the images for my stories. And this has been very interesting indeed, because I've been traveling around, traveling to my day job and back and forth, and during pandemic times, I was often the only one on the bus. And so it made it particularly a double-decker, a very interesting viewing and photographic travelling studio. And so that was quite useful in the early days of doing these photo comics. Later on, I thought about how to extend the idea of these comics, and I thought of doing international editions. I thought of moving back towards having people in the comics. And so the past couple of comics, I've tended to stay with the general idea that the comic is based on images of places with the characters living in the, living in the captions and the dialogue in the same way as a text novel, but with these images. But then more recently, I've had characters actually appearing in the stories, but still heavily based on the atmospheres and the places that the story's about. And the, the story still takes place out of and away from what is being shown. And so I'm thinking that I want to do something a little more unexpected with these. And I don't know what it is yet, but I can feel something coming up. I'm gonna do something with these, moving in the same way, but stepping sideways. I wouldn't say that I've been at the forefront of media revolutions. I've kind of, in a way, just been there when people have, have invited things and suggested things, and I've said yes. When you've got a sequence of people doing something or in conversation, and usually at this stage I haven't in detail written the story yet, it's very, very interesting to look at those pictures, imagine what they might be talking about, imagine how that's going to fit in with some pictures. One way of looking at Chris Reynolds's work that I find useful is to look at Chris's imagination as opening up a kind of creative portal in the way that a shaman might employ certain practices and rituals in order to enable people to achieve an altered state of consciousness, to enhance their experience of reality and develop new ideas, perspectives and visions.